In this demonstration, we will create and analyze the near fields radiated from a wire inside a metallic box with an aperture. This is from the IEEE transactions on EMC from February 2000. We start by setting the model unit to centimeters. Now click on cuboid and set the base corner N coordinate to minus 15. Also enter the dimensions for the cuboid. This will be the box, so we enter box for the label. Now zoom to extents. We define a few variables for the slot to store some of its parameters. Firstly, slot length. Secondly, slot height. And lastly, slot offset. Next we create the slot using these variables, so we select rectangle. On the work plane tab, snap to the face center of the cuboid. Now modify the origin as shown. This positions the work plane at the corner of the rectangle we are busy creating. On the Geometry tab, enter the width and depth using the variables slot length and slot height. Also enter the label which is slot. The inside of the box will be vacuum, so we select the box in the tree, expand regions and set the region medium to free space. Next we use the subtract operator to subtract the slot from the box. Select the slot, click on subtract from and select the box. This creates the box with the slot. To demonstrate the parametric characteristic of the slot, we modify its height and offset. The new position and size can be seen in the 3D view. We can rename the subtract by right clicking and renaming to box slot. Next we will create the wire in the box. To view inside the box, create a cut plane. We use the default XY cut plane, but positioned slightly above the center of the box. Click on Line and on the Work Plane tab, set the origin's X coordinate to 5 cm to be consistent with the model from the article. On the Geometry tab, set the V end point to 14, which is the width of the box. The label is Probe. To ensure a connection between the two parts, we union the probe with the box slot. We rename the union to Probe Box Slot. We require two ports, one at each end of the wire. On the Source Load tab, click on Wire Port. Click on the wire in the 3D view. We can select also from the tree. For the first port, set the location to end and add. For the second port, change the location to start. Port annotations can be added as shown. We now define the excitation that will be on port 1. Under Source Load, click on Voltage Source. Enter 1 millivolt from the article for the magnitude and create. The loads are also set under the Source Load tab. For port 1, enter 50. And for port 2, 
enter 47. The frequency still needs to be set. We store the frequency in the variable freq with value as shown. Then we use this variable in the frequency dialog. We will calculate near fields. On the request tab, click on near fields. For the definition method, select spherical. Enter the values as shown to calculate near fields on a half sphere approximately 3 meters away from the box. The selected near field request is shown in yellow. The near field request can be hidden by right clicking on the request and selecting show hide. The cut plane can be disabled by going to the cut plane dialog and unselecting active. Due to the narrow width of the slot and the fact that the current gradient will be highest in this area, we first specify a finer local mesh size for the slot. To do this, we select the two vertical edges of the slot. Right-click and select Properties. Under the Meshing tab, we will set the local mesh size. To calculate an appropriate local mesh size, we first calculate the free space wavelength. Note this is scaled by 100 since we are working in centimeters. The mesh size according to wavelength will be TL0. And the finer mesh size for the slot will be TL1. We specify the mesh size for the slot edges to be dependent on frequency as well as the separation distance between the slot edges. This expression ensures that the slot will be meshed according to wavelength or the slot separation, whichever is smallest of the two expressions. Enter TL1 for the local mesh size and OK. To reduce computational resources, we can use magnetic symmetry. Go to the Solve Run tab and click on Symmetry. Select Magnetic Symmetry for the Z equals naught plane. Magnetic Symmetry is shown in grey. The FECA website Help Center contains some pages with further info on setting symmetry. Now we are ready to mesh the model. Create a standard mesh. The wire segment radius was 0.08. If we zoom in, we can see the mesh automatically grows from the small elements on the slot edges to the larger elements on the box elsewhere. Now run FECO. When FECO has finished, run post FECO for post processing. To view the near fields in 3D, on the Home tab, click on Near Fields. On the Result palette, we can change to DB. Field values can also be displayed individually by holding Ctrl Shift and left clicking on the fields in the 3D view. This concludes the demonstration. For help in setting up your own models, please contact FECO support.